Got a lot of stuff to cover today, and uh, we're going to start out with SantaCon. I can't believe it's that time of year already. Give you some updates on that one. That's going to be how you can get involved in that. Maybe a picture from last year. Also, uh, homestead exemptions may be changing with this year's election for us down here in the villages. Surge protection, I got a update on that. Oh, man, my closet. A lot of you guys chimed in about stuff with the closet. I'll show you the links to that and what happened with that. Some problems I had and a slight update in the carnivore diet thing. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome. I'm down here in the villages and on this channel, as a lot of you know already, I do a lot of stuff on the villages, retirement, that type of thing. And from the very beginning, I always tried to do things as I learn about them. If it's something new, I kind of try to pass it along to you. Anyway, thank you so much to everybody that subscribed. You can either use the QR code or you can just use the subscription button down there. But in any case, please uh, hit the like button if you find anything useful. Along the bottom, you can go ahead and scrub along the bottom and I'll make sure I put chapters in there and all the links, pertinent links will be down in the description. <laughs> well, I got that all out of the way and man, I'll tell you what, it's been hot down here and there are some more tropical storms brewing down in uh, the tropics down there. And as always, if it's going to pertain to us, I will jump in and do a little update for us in Central uh, Florida and the villages. As you know, I used to be a storm chasing guide and I have since retired. So I just do it around here and kind of jump around on the hurricanes. And if you're subscribed, I will go out live usually and broadcast right from my car as I go chase around. With all that said, Let's jump on to the first subject, and I'm kind of excited about this. I get kind of giddy about it every year, and that is SantaCon. Let's do it. SantaCon alert, SantaCon alert, SantaCon alert. Um, Patty, Tim, and myself had our first meeting, kind of like a planning meeting, and there's going to be a few changes this year to SantaCon. If you don't know what SantaCon is, uh, actually, Patty and Tim started it the first year, and I said, hey, I'll volunteer to help out. And between the three of us right now, we just kind of throw it up there, and really, you guys make the party. We, we just kind of announce the day, and it kind of takes on a life of its own. There is not a whole lot of planning to this, but most of the information, in fact, almost all of it, is disseminated through the Facebook page. I have a QR code for you to sign to uh, do right here and make sure you're subscribed to that because that's the way we're going to get the information out. There are going to be some changes this year. The big thing right now is the date and that is Saturday, December 14th. There is not a rain date for it. So that's when it is. If you have no idea what SantaCon South is all about. It starts out at Sawgrass. The Blues Brothers are going to be performing again. Everybody had so much fun with them last year, backed by super popular demand. And uh, the Villages was so nice. Uh, you know, they really do have the entertainment at heart for people, and they hired them to come back again uh, this year. And I, as always, we want to thank Saw, um, the, the Sawgrass Grove and, and, and that whole area down there because they supply the prizes. There's prizes, uh, gift certificates for the best golf cart and um, the best dressed Santa. Also, the cool thing this year is we give away, it looks like a heavyweight wrestler belt. It's really cool for SantaCon for uh, that. And from what I hear, some of the old Santa Con, Santas from the prior years are going to be back to wear their belt proudly. So if you see them, tell them congratulations. Anyway, I'm just going to show a quick uh, video from last year so you can see it, and then we'll go ahead and move on. Check these golf carts out. <laughs> either, either you guys all shop at the same store or you know each other. We know each other. <laughs> and there's Max. <laughs> this is Toys for Tots. We want to thank everybody for dropping stuff off with them and all the things they do.
Just a short time ago, uh, right before the lightning season, hurricane season started, I did a video on surge protection. Now I had a surge protector put into my house and I did a video of the actual installation and the one that I bought. And a lot of stuff came about that that I didn't expect. But within that, um, there is a video in there that explains a lot about why you may want surge protection. So I will put that link down below. I'll put it at the end and maybe I can get it on a card right up above here if you want to watch it. But you guys don't miss a beat out there. I'll tell you what, some of the, the notes I get from people to crack me up because I go, I didn't even notice that. But Jeff wrote, um, did he relabel the panel after moving the breaker? So we shot this whole thing, and if you watch that video, you'll see it. Well, Jeff, here is your answer in video, and I'll see you just on the other side of this video. I'm out in the garage, and I'm here with a face you may know, and I'll let him introduce himself again. Hey, I'm John again, and I'm back to label that panel as promised, of okay. course. <laughs> He called me. So um, he's over here and he's gonna relabel this because if you remember when we put in the surge protector um, before, which is which is right here, uh, we had to, to do this right, we had to move for various reasons. I'm not gonna go into it now, but we moved the circuit breakers up so that these units were uh, closer to where the power comes into the box, right? Right, it yeah. makes it most, the most efficient operation. Right, right. So he's here, go ahead, might as well replace it now. Go ahead and put it on, huh? He's gonna put it on, so if he makes a mistake, it's gonna be on camera. Oh, no bro. <laughs> and this isn't a really big deal, but it is if you're trying to hunt around for a certain circuit well, breaker that's popped off. <laughs> it is a big deal for safety reasons, yeah. uh, too. If you go to work on something and you know, especially as a homeowner, if you click the wrong thing off, it could be a safety concern. Plus, this has a built-in um, audible alarm. So right. it's, it's it's important that we can identify what breaker goes with that search. So if that alarm's going off, you can turn that off. Give us a call. We can come take care of it for you. Yeah. So you I, if you guys didn't see the other, other video on surge protection, even if you're not looking at uh, for surge protector, a lot of people have told me they found it really knowledgeable to watch that video but after i started getting into into my research and i started doing more and more research i realized that there's more than just one way that these surges can enter into a house and do damage right yeah, they're tricky and and we're, we're talking about that now we're coming up with some good stuff but if if you didn't know it already um we're, we're, we're still offering a discount? Absolutely. Right, okay. So if you mentioned that you saw this video or you watch the other surge protection video, just mention that when you call them up, if you have any questions and stuff like that, and you will get a discount. And the reason I'm not saying how much the discount is right now, because I'm, I'm hoping we can get them to put a package together since I may have this other stuff done. But let's talk about this right here. Um, so we have like phone lines and cable lines that still don't go through the panel, is that correct. correct? Yeah, you can still get damage to your cable lines. So, I mean, this isn't part of your electrical system, but it's coming into your house. Right. So if something hits outside and it comes in through this little line right here, right. it's connected to your modem, which is connected to your TV, which is connected to your electrical system. Right. So as it added level of protection, you do want to put something here to protect you on your low volt side. And most people now are using cable lines, but some people use a spectrum, which is phone, I think. So we do right. have solutions for either hooking up. Well, and some people still have landlines yeah. for specific so reasons. They design you know. it for all of them. You got cable, you got landline, you got ethernet connectors. So there's, there's right. products so, available to protect everything. So, so the electricity kind of follows the easiest path. It, yeah. it, it, it can go through. And uh, if you watch the other vi video, the installation video, also something that was that, that was really important was checking the ground, which we did. We yeah. went out it's and did that. Yeah. Now, let's talk about one more thing that we're talking about, because I'm probably going to get all this stuff done and I'll be happy to. You mind doing a video? I don't know. No, OK, so I may, I may tax him to do another video again. But I was talking about 
the air conditioner and all of us have air conditioners down here and there are various ways that these surges can get into um into your house i i did do a video once before on the air conditioner um in my maintenance thing where i did a, a video and I, I actually bought the capacitor because they go out a lot and i just want to make sure i had one on hand whether i did or not so what are we talking about here this so, has to do with the air conditioner yeah so you know this uh, the electrical from your panel was going through your house out to this disconnect for your air conditioner. Right. So there's a there's a quite a long length of wire from A to B there. And it, this is all about time, how quickly we can capture the surge. So if you've got a surge coming in from this direction, uh, if you take a close proximity right. lightning strike or whatnot, it's going to come through here and it takes time to get through that wire to that panel to have your whole house surge capture that. Right. So it's, it's also important to have one here so it captures it instantaneously and, and protects you on the AC side. And um, just as reference, I'm going to I'm going to kind of say this. We, we don't need to name prices right now, but this in general is not like as as expensive. No, it's much, much simpler. Install. Uh, simpler install, easier to install. And and I was talking to him a little bit and I was saying, well, it would have been great if we had done almost like a package. So I'm trying to. Talk to him about maybe that's, we can create a package. That's, we can a, that's tell a great that. idea. I'm going to start working on that yeah. now. <laughs> I'm pimping them. Um, also, what, what's really cool is they also have a parent company or company that they work with. And we're kind of like caught in the sun yeah, here. trying to dodge the sun yeah. there. Um, in Texas yep. and Arizona. And Arizona. Yep. Uh, so there, there's a lot of area to work with. And uh, maybe we'll do some videos or something like that. Uh, include them in it. Yeah, absolutely. make them part of the party. They love it, so to speak. Um, anyway, that's great. Thanks a lot for coming back out again. Thanks for having me out again. And, and we'll make sure you guys are subscribed because if you have any interest in this, if we can figure out a package and stuff like that to order, um, I'll actually do the install on it now that he's on camera saying he'll he'll do it. You got me trapped now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this looks sounds like this is gonna be a pretty quick and easy install, but maybe next week or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot, John. I really All appreciate right, it. Appreciate you. And uh, talk to you later. Oh yeah, we will. And and thanks to them for coming back and doing that. I actually I forgot about it. <laughs> if you haven't watched the video I did on surge protection and the installation, we go through a lot of stuff, and there is a video there. You'll learn a lot. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to buy one, but at least you'll learn something and, and what I did. But I, through the other comments and questions that I saw in there, I had people say, well, I got one put in for you know $200 or something like that. And the difference in the price, or it's kind of like the difference between a Ferrari and a Chevy. I, I, I don't know. I'm just making something up there. But there is definitely a difference. And... What makes up those units and the ability for them to handle a surge is what makes a difference. Also, this is not, these aren't DIY to put these in because there is a uh, kind of a higher degree warranty on them. So the company requires that, that they're professionally installed. I do know that they're coming up with some new packages that, that you just saw in that video. So Make sure that you're subscribed. I think next week they're going to come out and put those other two units in uh, for me. And I don't know, maybe he'll have something, part of a package or something like that. Anyway, that's it. Let's move on to the next one. Some time ago, I did a video on becoming a Florida resident because when I went through it, I made a big boo-boo on my homesteading. So whether you know it or not, you can actually homestead your home, and I'll let you watch the video because that explains it all. I'm not going to explain it all here. And you can get a reduction in the value of your home by about $50,000. Now, certain things apply and stuff like that. But uh, I will tell you that the deadline to do that is March, but there are exceptions that you can still do it for those exceptions in September that's the last day. I'll tell you my big boo-boo I made was that I put it off for a year just because I still had my place up in Pennsylvania, 
Well, the price of my home went up in that time. So one of the benefits of homesteading is that the price of your home that they tax you on will only go up 3%. It's limited. Well, the price of my home went up more than 3%. So now I get taxed more because I wasn't quick enough. So watch that video. But with that, there is a change to that homestead. Well, it's not complete yet because it's going to come up for a vote. And that's uh, Bill uh, 7019. And what that basically says is that since we have the Inflation Care Act or whatever that Biden's gotten there, um, inflation went up so much, they enacted this because that discount wasn't keeping up with inflation. So now um, the, the bill that was just passed, 7019, will actually change that 50000 each year, adjust it, by the inflation rate benefit for some, I guess. And but it has to be passed this November in our voting round here for the state. So that will come up for a vote. So one, make sure you watch that video. If you haven't uh, homesteaded, it's something you have to go do. It just doesn't happen if you haven't homesteaded your home. So anyway, that's it. And get out and vote for that. I think it's a good thing. On to the next subject. This is kind of a fun one. I, I do this myself every year still. And I'll, I'll tell you my own story here in a second, but it might be worth uh, watching this uh, video. I'll tell you about it in a second. It says, uh, Mitzi wrote, and thanks a lot for all the stuff you've written, Mitzi. We really appreciate it. Rusty, I'm behind on your videos. I guess she's plowing through from the beginning. I uh, was watching a video, my husband had, watching this video, and my husband had money from 2012 in a credit union, not much, about 35 bucks, but hey, it's something. He also had about 40 bucks in 2024, not sure where that was from, uh, we're in Texas for reference. Thanks for these great tips, I'm going to continue to look for more. And then she says, uh, wow, crazy, I'm going to continue to look, found some for our oldest son. So that's kind of fun. Well, let, let, let me explain to you what happened to me. After my mom passed away, uh, a few years afterwards, I started looking in this unclaimed property. And I explained it all in the video, how to do that and that, that type of thing. And I, I, after looking, all of a sudden I saw this and I go, what is this? She had almost $5,000 credit in a furniture department, a furniture store. And so what happens is, is legally they can't just if nobody takes it, they can't just so they have, to, they have to turn it over to the state. And so that's where it was. Well, as I'm looking through that out in California, I had done uh, if you don't know it, I was in the film business for a while. So I had done some films and they had played up in the Bay Area up in San Francisco. And the TV station had to pay me residuals. Well, they couldn't find me because they only had Rusty Nelson. They didn't have my real name, so they, they had to turn it over to the state. So I found more money doing that. So every year now, I kind of around taxis, and I go back and check all the places I've lived. And um, I haven't found anything lately, but I have, and I'm, I'm glad Mitzi did. So watch that video. It's kind of fun, and I hope uh, you find some stuff for your family. Last week, I did, and I wasn't going to do this, and I decided to do it at the last second, a video about me installing the, redoing my closet in my walk-in closet in my master bedroom, and I thought, yeah, nobody's, nobody will care about this. Well, apparently I was wrong, because I got a ton of comments about it, and some of them were really good, some of them were suggestions, and uh, it, it turned out that it helped a lot of people. And uh, so Mar Margie wrote, I mean, there's a, a bunch of suggestions and questions, but these just kind of stuck out at me. It says, installed the system, two different homes over the year and never had a problem. It was a DIY project that I put in myself. I never had any problem with any of the components. So over the years, they looked and operated like the day that they were installed. And I was talking about the little holes, you know, peg holes in the side. And I was trying to figure out a way to cover them, but it, she's writing this. That don't worry about it. They're just there. And talking about adjustments. Well, 
In one area, you know, I, I was trying to decide, do I need a higher area to hang stuff? So what I did is I ordered an extra bar across the top that I just put in storage and an extra shelf so that anytime I decide to change it or move around, I always have the pieces. So hey, it cost me an extra 30 bucks or 40 bucks to have the two kind of just stored away. And then also Peter wrote, and, and this is kind of funny because I, I did run into this problem and I, it wasn't an installation video, so I didn't say anything about it, but um, I, I'm glad Peter brought it back up again. It says, Rusty, nice job. Closet looks great. One question, did you have an issue hanging the rod on the pocket door side? Thanks, Pete. <clears throat> well, what he's talking about is if you don't know what a pocket door is, uh, just in case, it's one of the doors that slides in between the wall. So it just kind of pulls out like that and then slides back in. Well, when I had the home, when I did the home inspection video, and if you're going to think about buying a house or you've bought a house within the last year, this is definitely a video you want to watch. I mean, there's two videos for new people coming down here or people that have just bought a house. And that is the home inspection video. And the next one is the uh, Becoming a Resident that I talked about a little earlier, and I'll put the links to those down below. Without a doubt, watch those two videos. But I asked the guy that was doing the home inspection, I said, what's one of the biggest things you see in the first year when you come in that it's a mistake or something like that? And he says, well, you're going to chuckle about this because one of the mistakes is people hang stuff in their closet or hang pictures or whatever, and they do it right in front of the pocket door. Well, if you drill a screw through there, then you basically have screwed shut the pocket door or open. And when I was going to install it, luckily I thought of that, and I had to do just some modifications to the shelf and the rod when I did that. So if you think about it, I don't want to get too much into this, but that right there where it hangs is a shear strength. So in other words, that wall is like this. It actually has to go like this, and it's it, it, you get a lot more strength when things are a, a shear type of thing rather than where it would actually pull out. So that, that all I did is cut everything short and test it without drilling into my door. So thanks a lot for Peter bringing that up. And uh, if you haven't watched the video, I'll put the link down below for the uh, DIY closet. And I, I don't know why I waited three years to do it, but I wish I had done it sooner. On to the next and final one, carnivore. Here we go, the carnivore diet. And I don't know whether you guys remember this, if you hadn't watched it or, any, or it, it, last year, 30 days before Thanksgiving, I went on a carnivore diet. Now, I just didn't whimsically do this. I like studied about it for two months. I went to a surgeon that did all my blood tests and everything else and followed along like five pages of blood tests. And I, 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 I mean, all kinds of tests before I started this to build a base in. And uh, in 30 days without hardly trying, I lost 25 pounds, and this was an experiment for myself, my own experiment on my body to learn more about my diet and that type of thing, because I have to admit, I went to the doctor and I had, um, they said, well, your blood glucose is a little high. Now, it wasn't crazy high, it was just about 6.0, but it had been that way, if you know anything about that, it had been that way for years. Well, as I started to study a little bit more about it, I realized that 6.0 is still doing some damage. So I actually wear a, 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 a glucose monitor now, and I, I'll update you on that and everything. But I kind of uh, fell off the wagon, sort of, and I'll explain it to you really quick. First of all, my health is fine. I'm um, I'm perfectly happy, healthy. After that 30 days, I lost 25 pounds. And then after that, I had gone on to lose a total of 40 pounds. Well, everybody I knew said, well, you're getting too skinny. You look, you know, you, you, don't, 
you, you're just getting too skinny. And to tell you the truth, I felt great. I was feeling really good. Well, in all those blood tests, they started to see some things that were didn't look right with my cell counts. And when they, they, I said, well, does that have anything to do with this, the diet thing? They said, absolutely not. Every doctor said, no, absolutely not. And they said, you've been this way for years and years. Like we went back to 2018, 2017, and I was still the same, but they had dropped off a little bit. So they started getting a little worried. And I had, to, I went to the cancer center and they ended up doing a bone marrow biopsy and all kinds of stuff to make sure there wasn't something going on. After all that was done, um, they basically said, well, uh, there's nothing really going on. We just think you're this way and it's kind of unexplained. Come back in six months. So we did that and the checks are still negative. That's just the way I am. Now, with that said, I kind of, with people telling me that I was too skinny and I needed to put weight back on and all kinds of other things, I started eating. I went through the holiday and, and I'll explain a bunch of that because I'm going to do an update as we get closer to Thanksgiving for a year because I'm telling you what, I learned a lot about dieting, my body, how I feel when I'm doing certain things. Like I said, it was an experiment for myself. And I know a lot of people, I started meeting a lot of people around the villages that were actually on the carnivore diet. And if you don't know what it is, it's eating meat. I, I, I mean, the basic part of it is you're basically eating zero carbs. So you're taking all the sugars, carbs, and everything out of your diet Basically, I was eating meat, fish, eggs, bacon, you know, that was it. That was my diet. Felt great. Lost a lot of weight. And um, I kind of, in a sense, fell off the wagon, and I put about half of that back on. And now I'm just maintaining right there, and I'm learning how to work with this. And that's why I'm going to wait till closer to Thanksgiving to kind of give a full update, and it's probably going to stretch over a bunch of episodes because I've just learned a lot. And I, I even have a, um, a video from Dr. Sivas that I'm going to play. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff. But that being said, I am in good health, a lot better than when I started that whole thing, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, I just kind of feel like I owed you an update. I have a ton of comments and questions and stuff like that that I've saved. So I'll address all those. And also what I don't understand, a couple of people wrote they were looking for a carnivore club in the villages. And yet somebody said they had started one, but then never left a way to find it. So nobody knows where it is. So there's a lot of people that are on the carnivore diet or close to it or something that resembles it. And they were looking for the um, carnivore type club, you know, where people meet, uh, that eat like that. And some people call it the proper human diet. And so if you're out there and you know, please put in the comments uh, where this like kind of club is in the villages because nobody can seem to find it. Anyway, that's it. Um, so it's it. That's it. That's the update. That's all I'm gonna do right now because it, it's kind of tough to do this because it, it's an experiment on my own body, and it really kind of scared me when people were going out and saying, "I'm doing it because of you." Well, don't do it because of me. You need to talk to your doctors, and everybody's got the biggest thing I learned is everybody's different. Right, everybody's different, so you have to kind of do your own thing. I, I'm rambling now. Sorry about that. So I'm going to stop it right here. Perfect health, as far as they tell me. I'm doing good, having a good time. Love the villages. And anyway, that's it for now. That's the end of it. Thank you so much, everybody, for subscribing. Also, if you're subscribed. I'm going to try to do those broadcasts. Like I said, there's some stuff moving in from the tropics right now. If it's going to affect us or Central Florida, I will do some live stuff or I will do more videos as things look like they're going to, as far as the hurricane season, which we're getting into the heart of it here real soon. 
uh, approaches. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please write down in the comments. The comments help. The more comments you write, um, the more people learn, right? Uh, anyway, and then maybe next week I'll have that installation of the other stuff that uh, Len Hart was going to put on there. Remember, if you're going to have something done by them, mention this video because some of the stuff they'll give you a discount off of it. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go out and enjoy my holiday weekend. I hope you do too. I'm just getting done this on Friday. So uh, tonight I'm going to college night. And uh, unfortunately, you won't see this till Sunday. But anyway, thanks a lot for joining me, S subscribing, liking, all that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll see you later. I'll see you out in the villages or I'll see you back here on YouTube.